Hey, folks, welcome back to the show. Let's get started with our guest for today, Senator Vince Palestine in New Jersey's latest legislative district, Two. Welcome to the show, sir. Thanks, Mike. Great to be here. Appreciate you being here. Listen, welcome back. First of all, I want to thank you for coming out, taking the time. Uh, let's get started. Jump right in it. Tell us a little bit uh, how the last two years have been for you, you know, rounding it out. I know that's a whole lot for this little bit of time we got, but go ahead, sir. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, I really uh, thank the people for giving me the opportunity to, to serve uh, as Atlanta County Senator. Uh, we have had so many accomplishments, Mike, when you think about everything that has been done from the Atlanta County prosecutor, five Superior Court judges to administrative law judges, appointments to places like Stockton University, which have been fabulous to get people actually on the Board of Trustees. I heard somebody call it the other day, Princeton in the Pines. So now I use the moniker for Stockton, Princeton in the Pines. Love it. Uh, but appointments there and CRDA and SJTA, so people in place everywhere. And then, you know, some of the, the funding that we've been able to obtain and, and uh, invest in, when you think about Stockton University and you think about Atlantic Care and the aviation research facility, of course, our tourism industry, you know, all uh, investments that we have made. We have done things to like get uh, traffic improvements done at the old Shore Mall area, you know, where, the, where Boscov's is. So you're going to see some improvements there to improve the traffic situation there. It's just been a great time working with Don Guardian, and Claire Swift, uh, just focusing on Atlantic County and trying to figure out how we can get things done to create opportunities for people here. And that's what it's all about, talking about Don Guardian. Had the privilege of working with him a few times, two times actually, where his run for mayor is a successful one. And coming up just a little short, guy uh, pretty much goes pretty much anywhere, doesn't he? Just good he people does. out there and... Yeah, just fabulous, fabulous person. You know, Don is just a humanitarian. He just cares about people, and he will literally do anything, go anywhere, meet with anyone, which is great for our team. You know, Claire Swift and I, exactly. yeah. businesses, families, we're a little busier, but Don has the time being retired right now to be able to go out there, and he literally will do anything for anyone. Just, you know, got a great heart, fabulous person. Right. You know, we just have a great team. We work along great together and really like each other and really like what we have done for the people of Atlanta County. And your other partner, Claire Swift, love having her on the radio and as well as here, brings the kids along and whatnot. We had such a great time. Awesome team. Talk to us about that. I know you did. You touched on it. Just the three of you, just how you work together, because it's so important. I call it a team. I mean, just it's it's strong in the sense of, you know, we're dealing with over 250,000 people. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, it's about that, about 230,000 per right. district. So, and that is the thing. Politics, I always say, is a team sport. You know, it's not an individual sport, although some people try to treat it like an individual sport, but we here in Atlantic County are a team. And Claire, you know, background as a deputy attorney general, mother, lawyer, that brings a different perspective than Don and I. Me as an engineer, Don being a business administrator in his career and, you know, special improvement district, we complement each other so well and come from different backgrounds, different perspectives, but at the same time have developed such a great team and such an ability to work together to help people in Atlantic County. So I can't thank them enough. You know, when you get into this spot, you need people there are going to have your back, and they have been there from the start and uh, couldn't uh, ask for anything better, frankly, for the residents of Atlantic County than to have Don and Claire there. We're definitely blessed. Listen, the NARTP progress, talk to us about that. Great, uh, great opportunities here for the NARTP, National Aviation Research Technical Park, you know, formerly the Aviation Research Park. Uh, we had a groundbreaking there last Thursday, so a week ago from when we sit here today. So, you know, groundbreaking for the second building, which is going to be about a 40,000 square foot building. It'll complement building one, which is existing. Ton of interest uh, for people to want to go into the building, you know, and, and that facility now, you have partnerships with the FAA, you have partnerships, of course, with, you know, the Air Force, you have partnerships with the SJTA, you have NASA in that building, uh, and including to some private entities that are in that building. And so building one is filled up. Building two, ton of interest from people who want to be involved in the aviation industry here because of the connection to the FAA. Um, so we have something here, you know, when you think about South Jersey, we've been dependent on tourism for way too long. But when you think about South Jersey, you have water on three sides. You know, if you go east, you got water, south, you got water, a little west, go, it got water. But we do have the federal military base, the William J. Hughes Technical Center. We do have an underutilized Atlantic City International Airport. You have on the base the air marshals, the Coast Guard, you know, some entities out there that you really have the ability to work with. And of course, 
one of the most important, the 177th Fighter Wing with our F-16s, right here, literally 10 minutes from where we sit, our F-16s, which are the primary uh, defense base for the East Coast from New York all the way down to DC. And so we're able through the National Aviation Research Technical Park and the next development to be able to leverage some of the assets we already have here and really position ourselves for opportunities going into the future, which is what this is all about. And that's awesome, again, diversification of jobs and uh, investors and businesses and whatnot coming into the area. Uh, we touched on it a little bit earlier. And there's a couple more phases possibly to come out there. I mean, we want to fill that second one, of course, and get it done. But there's interest as well as putting uh, different phases in there? There is. And uh, seven buildings total is the development. Mm. So this will be building number two. You know, and things in aviation are changing, of course, all the time. The technology is changing so right. much. So they did a drone demonstration with the groundbreaking the other day, which was great. They actually had a drone up in the air, and they were videoing the groundbreaking and the ceremony, and they had it live streaming right to the uh, TV that was right there. So some really cool technology that they were utilizing there. But then, you know, the ability to have these unmanned aerial vehicles, mm -hmm. similar to drones that can kind of take off like helicopters, you know, possibly take you from the airport right over to Atlantic City to the casinos. You know, this technology is coming and we're hoping, I think we will be, you know, the premier entity doing the research and the testing and making sure we're getting these facilities done. And so I think the future is very, very bright as it relates to aviation in the area. Love it. And a little less uh, important than what you were just speaking of, but still important when we talk about the 177th. I mean, we just recently had the air show again. Them being close to us right here and throughout the East Coast, so important. It's unbelievable. And, right. you know, the fact that they can uh, go up there and scramble those F-16s literally in right. 10 minutes, we had an opportunity uh, to do the uh, the tour of the base and watch them do one of their practice runs to start scrambling the F-16s and so they're in their barracks. Right. You know, the alarm goes off and they're scrambling out with all their gear and everything, getting in the cockpit and literally from 10 minutes from when the alarm went off to the, when they're up in the air is how long it takes and then they can get anywhere on the East Coast so quickly. And so, you know, to have that facility here that some people don't even know about is really pretty remarkable. They do a fabulous job. Uh, with what they do and of course you know those f-16s <laughs> are pretty yeah. pretty cool to watch and you see them take yeah. off, you see them land it's uh pretty neat to see so it is cool that we have those kind of facilities here and have an opportunity to be able to do the tours to take a look at that stuff and i'm going to go a bit further i mean it's not part of our bullet points but when you say learning about it i know me as as a kid a hundred years ago uh you know we didn't really know what was going on there you know for our students in Atlantic County, just to get them to get out there. And they probably do it. I'm not sure if they do. Is that something that some, we could work on or it's been worked on already? Yeah, I think they do. I mean, uh, ACIT specifically okay. is doing some yeah. aviation related stuff. So I think they have an interconnection kind of with the NARTP certainly, and then to the FAA and the 177th. So I think that relationship is getting worked out. And I think Stockton actually has some, you know, programming now related to aviation that kids can get involved in, which is great. You know, to the extent we can get kids involved. They have some simulators out at the NARTP. We had an opportunity to um, do the F-16 simulator when we were out there. So they actually have two of them. I don't right. know how much I can say, but they have two of them. You get to actually fly the F-16s. It's kind of this wow. simulator right over kind of our area right here. And so I was able to buzz over my house and Claire was, in, Claire was in the other simulator. I was in the one I actually shot her down. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you can do that stuff here. And they yeah. are doing, you know, they're doing that kind of research and mm. testing and training right here, literally within 10 minutes of where we are right now. So it isn't all kissing babies, knocking on doors, shaking hands, isn't it? Right. Once you're there, you get to have a little fun and, and just see how important what is going on over there. It is. And that's the one thing you've heard me say because we've done this and done the radio. I always try to make sure that I'm not commenting on things that I haven't experienced firsthand. So rather than being someone who just, you know, shouts from the rooftops about whatever, I want to go see things and I want to see them for myself and talk to the people there myself. So, you know, I always try to do that, get as much experience as you possibly can so that you're more educated, you know, and better able to do the job. Right. That's so cool. Listen, Let's shift gears a little bit, go over to Atlantic City. I know there's some AC fatigue, but I think it's getting a little bit better in that sense uh, in Trenton as well uh, so far. Boardwalk, I, it's so important. I mean, I touched on the, uh, uh, the air show. It's always a, 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 an awesome visual for me just to jump on top of whether it's the Caesars Pier or one of the high rises and get a picture of that boardwalk and beach the way it looks. 
some uh, money, some funding coming to the boardwalk. What do we say about that? Any uh, progress being made? Yeah, absolutely, Mike. So, of course, it was $100 million that was put into the budget for the boardwalk replenishment fund statewide. Um, but the governor came to Atlantic City to sign the legislation, so we thank him for coming to Atlantic City. He was able to participate in the bill signing. Uh, when he actually signed the legislation, put it into effect. Um, so I was there with Governor Murphy, and I expect that everything I'm hearing, you know, the applications are due by the end of the month, and then we'll hear by the end of the year, but I expect Atlantic City is going to get probably about half of the $100 million. And so you're going to see some significant investment into the boardwalk, obviously the oldest boardwalk in the world. Right. You know, what makes us different from any other gaming jurisdiction, that beach, the boardwalk, the ocean, the geography is different than anywhere else. And so seeing the governor and the state and you know us having the ability to work with them on the boardwalk fund to see that reinvestment into Atlantic City is wonderful and you know Atlantic City the numbers are are doing better so you know online gaming sports betting you know doing very very well the brick and mortar the return for, uh, of people coming to the city lagging a little bit behind but still getting better so i think as we get further away from the pandemic you know and, and people feel more comfortable traveling and getting back out there we're seeing increased uh, activity and in people coming to the city which is of course a great thing for everyone around here uh, we love it listen and one of the things i'll give a shout out to mayor small and his administration back when that crazy 2020 when that happened he kept the boardwalk open and i thought that was cool and for the governor i get to see him every once in a while when he does come into town which is more than i thought jogging on the boardwalk and whatnot. So maybe he wants to get some of those nails nailed down. Uh, so it's, yeah. it's no, but we definitely need that because we got about a minute here, Vince. That street, because it is a street, it's the first of its kind, the longest of its kind. And you can fact check that. Not you, I know you know, but you can. But, you know, talk, you know, we got about 30 seconds for this segment here. The importance, again, that's a street. Yeah, it is. And, it, you know, so much activity and so much, uh, you know, spin off economic activity for the merchants, for everything right. going on in the city. It is just a great amenity, something that we have to invest in. Make sure we're keeping up uh, on the repair of the boardwalk and then the lighting of the boardwalk, you know, safety of the boardwalk. And so that is critical going forward. Hey, Senator Vince Palestina, thank you so much. Stick right where you're at. We're going to be right back. Stick around. The Mike Lopez Show will be right back with more from today's guest, Senator Vince Palestina. <laughs> 